Hey guys, I wanted to just quickly give you a nice tip on how to animate or simulate how to anim animate or simulate uh, fat or muscles or uh, secondary animation on a character that has this sort of cool setup um, like a soft selection controller on them. Uh, obviously this is dependent on the rig and in our online course with the dragon walk cycle which is here. Let me just plug our website for now. Uh, we have the academy and we have the walk cycle. It's all explained in there. There's also some other really cool courses that you can do, including our dragon animation masterclass. But on every character that I work with, I always do some sort of simulating of muscles if I can. You know, having a muscle system in a animated rig or an animation rig just slows down the performance so much. Of course, it's getting better. But uh, for now, this is a quick little tip on how to create that um, sort of fatty movement, I would say, <laughs> on the skin. Now, um, this is our final animation of the course. So we have this elephant walking uh, really nicely and slow, uh, just around, you know, in, in on the spot at the moment. but. I've turned off the animation layer for the jiggles. Just so you can see, if we zoom in here, there's not a lot of movement. That moment that this massive five, six ton, I don't know how heavy they are, um, elephant hits the floor here, you'd expect to see some sort of reaction to the muscle, especially as as the weight is, is being applied to this elbow and then the top of the chest weight is coming down, you'd expect all this sort of fatty, fatty area to have some sort of movement on its own, reacting to pressures coming from the ground up and from the chest down. So if I turn the layer of the jiggles on, the animation layer, you'll see something happened to the shoulder and the back. And when the shoulder now hits the ground, there's a bit of a wobble going on Boom, there. You probably notice it better on this side. Oof, there's a little bit of a wobble. You can definitely notice it here also on the chest area. Okay. And probably some on the back. I think there's some up here. Boom, there it is. Okay. Maybe if I turn on the wireframe, you might be able to see the wireframe move easier. Okay, um, so how do, you how do you create that on your rigs, on your animation, on your characters? How do you do that? Well, uh, all my students over the years that I taught, I always taught them one simple principle. And it is called, if any of you are watching, you're going to spit it out right now. It's called the lifeline. So there'll be a straight line like this and then a big bang like this, the initial reaction like a shock wave. And then each wave after that gets less and less and less and less until eventually it goes straight again. Okay. This, this is the curve that we are looking for to apply to all these parts of the elephant, you know, the fat and maybe here on the feet, on the ankles, all that sort of stuff. And you take the same curve and you apply it to a controller and what it looks like if I was to select one of these controllers as I can open up the curve graph editor and you can see the uh, the curve and what it looks like so it starts flat and it's important that it is flat at zero it has a zero value because you want it to you want it to uh, come back to zero and then start again afterwards you want to just have it looping and how to create this curve the fastest way I always used to do it and I didn't, I didn't actually just go in and start animating things going up and down. The quickest way to do this is to just go next to your character, okay? Create a, a little sphere or something. So let's create a sphere. And we'll just move it out. And then I'm gonna look at the Y curve and that's what I wanna work on. So I'll just go and let's just front view frame this. And I'm gonna isolate it for now, just so it's in my viewport. 
Okay, and then I'm going to go to frame one and I'm going to set a key. I'll just set a key on the whole thing. And I'm just going to be interested on the translation of Y. So I'm going to go to, let's say, frame six. I'm going to lift it up like a bouncy ball. And I'm going to open, actually, open up the graph so you see what the curves are doing here. Okay, so as I'm lifting it up, uh, it, this is the curve that it's creating. It's going up. And then as we go to, let's say, 11, I'm going to bring it down. I want to bring it on the x-axis, more or less the opposite amount. Okay, so the opposite amount value. So minus, let's say, minus 80, whatever is fine. And I'm spacing these out in first in 6 and then 11, so it would be less one frame. And then I'm going to go maybe 16. And the quickest way I used to do it here when I was doing this for um, Game of Thrones or whatever, I would just quickly go in and grab the in-between frame. Let's say frame 3 is the in-between of this curve here. And I want to paste that here anyway. So I would just go to frame 3, middle mouse, drag to 15 and set the key. And you see it just creates that, um, that thing. I'll do that again. So I'll go to frame 3. I'll just middle mouse. I don't have to do anything. I'll just middle mouse to 15 or 16 and just set the key. Okay, and it brings it over. Then I would go to the next one, which would be, um, yeah, so, so like frame eight or something and middle mouse paste it here. And you can see I'll just create the lifeline. Oh, that didn't work, that one. Let's go to this one, paste it here, and this one here, and this one here, and this one here one here or something and I get the lifeline just like that so but to simplify it for you guys you can you can uh, go to 16 and then just drag it up until you're halfway up maybe just move it up in the graph go to let's say 20 and bring it down oops let's take this curve and go halfway 24 doesn't really have to be exact frames Okay, and then I, I can also just insert keyframes. So I can insert a couple of frames here by pressing I on my keyboard, middle mouse, and dragging over the graph. And then I can just drag these keys down, you know, something along this. Let's just put this back to zero. Boom. And you see how it just, it just, the workflow doesn't work this way. It's much slower and it's much more. Oh, annoying so you sometimes just middle mouse dragging is faster cool and then you can take that and probably just retime the end of it and of course snap everything and what you're looking for is more or less a consistent line down to zero and a line up like this from the zero from the initial initial movement something like some sort of trading algorithm uh, let me just move this up and also towards the end what you want is the curves to get closer in time together okay so you want them to be happening and bouncing faster you remember at school when you used to put a, a ruler on a on a table and flick it and it would go towards the end that's what you're looking for so that your ball bouncing is just wiggling like that at the end boing I think in my case, I'm going one, two, three. This one, the second one is too much. So I'm going to start to bring everything down. Uh, and just bring it much lower earlier. That's better. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. And what you, if you're doing a cycle, this is the main tip, okay? So if you're doing a cycle between, like let's say it's a 40 frame cycle or 36 frame front cycle or whatever. You want this this bounce, this uh, lifeline to be within the half of your cycle. So that means, let's say we're doing a 40 frame cycle. You want this to be in finish before 20 because you want to maybe be able to use it on the other side of the leg without overlapping, if that makes any sense. We have a much longer cycle so I can use this and it's a heavier character. Good.
lot to discuss. So now I'm just going to copy this keyframe. It's got a massive value up here. I might just scale everything down a little. Go to edit copy. Right. Let's uh, go out of here and out of isolation mode. And let me just hide the ball on the layer for now. Because I don't want to. Um, I should always name your. You should always name name your layers. Otherwise, rigor shouted you. Okay. Cool. Now with that selected, then I can keep my jiggle layer off, and I can add a controller to it. So let's say this controller I want to add to that layer. So I'll add the animation layer, and I'll call it Jiggles O2 Demo, whatever. And let's see when the when the elephants. Let me turn this layer off for now. Boom. So he, around here, 20, I can now paste this onto the Y curve. So I can paste that onto it. It might be ridiculous. <laughs> like it might go crazy, which it is because of the values, the extreme values. But you can go in and just scale that all back. Uh, you know, just scale it down. Or we'll use the scale value and just punch it in. So in other words, I can go to edit scale. And I can bring that up here and I can use a, uh, you can just reset the settings and the value, um, you want to put that at like 0 0.8 and then just punch as, as you apply, it'll drop the curve. Boom, boom, boom. See here. So we want to make sure that it's noticeable. Boom. It is, the controller is moving and it's there. Boom. Boom. Okay, so it's there. I don't like that it's so fast. I think it needs to be a bit stronger and in theory a bit slower. So I'd snap that now. Boom. Okay, and then timing wise, I'm going to actually have it happen when the first foot lands. Bang, there. We'll kick in around here. Okay, now you can add, then you once you've got that, you can just say, well, I've got it now. I am going to go to the graph and I'm going to copy this value and I'm going to go and apply it to everything else. Everything else. On this rig is really cool because you've got a nerve surfaces. Trong was really cool by adding in these. I think he added them later on. Um, it would be nicer if, if you are watching Trong to put, um, put them as, as actual controllers, not as nerve surfaces. So that would really help us and here so for example this is a, a really big influence area so I can now add that to this this controller to that layer and let's find when is the first bang so it's there boom probably around 49.50 and I can go into the graph editor and we can use translation of Y and let's paste it on here. Paste select it. it. Again, it might be quite strong. Let's see how we go. Boom. Okay, it's very strong, but it is there. Oof. Okay. So on that one, then I can also turn this down. Um, I'll scale this down. Boom, 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 boom. boom. There we go. Okay, and then you can go around and add it to everything else as well. So we could do this one here on the side. I think that is the connection there. So around 15, open up the graph, add that to a layer, grab the Y curve and paste it on there. Quite strong again, so let's scale this down. It's always nice to have your tools sort of sitting around and ready to work when you animate. Bang. Okay. Let's turn off these nerve surfaces so we don't see that. Okay, there we go. Um, so that's a rough way of doing muscle sim on a character that doesn't have 
a muscle inside it and you or animating just the fat or the jiggles or anything like that on a character so um, yeah it adds much more realism to your rigs uh, to your animation and it's just those subtle things that I think that uh, lead animators if you're looking to um, get work in the industry and in animation industry it's those little things that the lead animators are looking for that sort of attention to detail the fine art of animating you know you once you've got the weight and everything working of the elephant and everything looks perfect the next thing he's going to look for um, is are those are those small uh, details okay all right and that is jiggles and simulating muscles i hope that helped you uh, if it did, please give us a like and subscribe. It would be really, really helpful for the channel as we continue to bring you more awesome stuff and awesome content. Cool. See you in the next one. Bye.